Nuclear war, attack on a nuclear power plant last night, talk of World War III, cyber warfare, and NATO is ramping up preparations. Where's this all going and what can we even do at this point? If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. As you can imagine, I've been getting a lot of messages, texts, emails, direct messages from a lot of individuals within the community, friends, family that are, well, very concerned right now. Clearly, many are concerned about the threat of nuclear war and, well, rightfully so. I'm not going to lie to you. There are a lot of real threats that we're facing at the moment and you should be rightfully concerned in preparing. What I'm going to try to do in this video is cover three primary things. I'm going to talk about where we're at today. We'll go over a brief discussion of our current situation. I'll second point, go over my advice to you now, and we'll end up discussing what I'm practically doing at this time. So let's lead off with where we're at today. If you know me, if you follow me for any length of time, you know that I try to be very calm and nothing's really changed. I'm not freaking out at the moment. I am concerned though, and I believe things are about to get a lot more difficult. I'll just tell you that up front. If you look at a long arc of history and you look at how recent global upheaval has predictably panned out, you would be foolish not to brace for even more tribulation and chaos. We're clearly in a time where change is the only thing that you can count on. Too many people want certainty amidst the chaos of this world, but at this point, certainty is the fool's dream. We all experience normalcy bias. Normalcy bias, it causes us to assume that although catastrophic events have been playing out, it won't impact me, and this will all simply pass us by. As a result, we end up failing to plan for the challenges we're experiencing and will likely manifest. And I think that's a very dangerous position to take right now. As I always say, if the recent events playing out in our world don't encourage us to prepare, nothing really will. And at the moment, we all have the threat of nuclear war hanging over us. With Putin, we've got an individual that is at the end of his life and he appears bent on taking the world with him. And this is what an autocratic dictator looks like. And this is what personally concerns me the most at where we're at today. With Putin's instability, his autocratic tendencies, there are no guarantees at this moment. He apparently has the ability to make unilateral decisions that are not in the best interest of Russia, much less the rest of the world. And we're seeing that play out in real time. Things can quickly change and you should be prepared for that possibility. Last night, we saw the Russian soldiers firing on a nuclear power plant. And while I don't necessarily see an international nuclear exchange as a high probability, the fact that another nuclear reactor could be compromised is a real threat. If I lived in Europe right now, yeah, I would be very, very concerned. Now, living in the US, I'm not as concerned, but again, I don't rule out the possibility of a nuclear exchange. So what will happen next? This next bit of information, I can't disclose the source, but uh, my business partners, we'll call him his friend. He's a hedge fund manager. And at the time of recording this video, he's involved with managing a very large hedge fund. And within their hedge fund, that they're, they're basically predicting a 30% stock market collapse in about a week. And how realistic do I think that is? It's Hard to say, but I could see that as a high probability. I'm not saying go out and sell uh, any of your investments. I am personally not. They're seeing market internals that are trading as if a massive collapse is about to come. And there's a lot of dispersion, even more than in 2008 and before COVID hit. If this situation doesn't resolve and Russia pushes further in, the economy is likely going to get hit hard. And the same hedge fund is predicting a 20% increase in food prices in the next month. The main wheat producing nations, they're stopping their exports. Fuel prices, I don't even have to tell you what will probably happen there. I live where I live, we're already over $5 a gallon. I expect to see well over seven a gallon by this summer, and that will trickle down to everything. Our food, it will impact everything. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that we're entering into what could be defined as World War III. It's already looking much more different than past wars, and this one could be a massive economic downfall that we'll see. We could see cyber attacks and a lot more. The nature of warfare may look a lot different than what we've seen in past situations. Now, my advice to you at this point is, well, let's just get down to brass tacks. What should you be doing right now? Here's the first thing I would encourage you to do. Stay calm. I, I mean that, seriously, stay calm. Stop doom scrolling. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of bad news out there. I check once or twice a day to make sure that nothing major has happened. 
I realize that if something major happens, I'll probably be getting a notification from a friend or family that uh, stays on top of these things. But for me personally, I've decided to pull back and check periodically, but just <laughs> try to enjoy life and move on. If there's a true massive nuclear exchange, the reality is that none of this will likely be here in 10 years anyway, and it won't matter how deeply buried your bunker is. I grew up in the 80s and this threat of nuclear exchange, it hung over our heads on a daily basis. And this was before the 24 hour news cycle and social media. I know it was even a bigger looming threat in the 1960s. At this point, it's out of my control and it never was in my control anyway. I'm watching individuals that are getting caught up in doom scrolling and it's doing them absolutely no good. Personally, I'm trying to pull back and spend more time with my family. I haven't been as active lately with the channel and that's been on purpose because I've been focusing on my family, spending more time with them than I have in the past. Now, the third point is this, prepare. And this is the most important point. And I'll share with you in this segment what I'm personally doing. And let me just say before I jump in, because the question always comes up, is it too late to prepare? And before everybody rushes to the comment section and says yes, my answer is no. It is never too late to prepare. Now, the best time was to prepare five years ago, three, four, whatever. But the second best time to prepare is today. If you can do whatever you can to put away food, water, fuel sources, medical, going to the store, buying extra canned food, buying five gallon water containers, whatever it is within your budget, I would encourage you to do so. Personally, I've been working in my garden more. I've been interacting with my chickens. I've been taking care of them. They are producing quite well. Uh, that's been really nice. I've been working out again. The last six weeks, I've really neglected my health. I've been so busy getting so caught up with the channel. I started putting on weight and I realized if something happens and I have to rise to the occasion, I need to be in good shape. I'm overhauling and rotating our food pantry next week. I've been going through today and looking at some of the different items and seeing what's out uh, about to go you know, expired and I'll be getting rid of some of those and replacing them with other items. I will be giving a lot of that away to charity, different food banks in my area. I'm not tossing in the trash, obviously. I'm charging up my propane tanks. On energy, I'm in a pretty good position. Last summer, I installed, installed a whole home battery backup system that is connected to a solar array we installed on our roof. So if the power goes down, we've got roughly eight kilowatts on the roof. The battery backup is 12 kilowatt hours. And if we ration our power, we'll be just fine. Uh, do I anticipate the power grid going down at this point i can't rule out the that is a possibility with so much that's happening i've been going through and updating our bug out bags i try to do that every six months but at this point i've been going through and reevaluating in case some situation forces us out and speaking of which i've got our gas mask and our cb rn filters on standby if something happens along with duct tape if i've got to uh, duct tape up the the windows so there's no air coming in any cracks if there is any fallout again i don't rule that out as a possibility i've also been going through and working on filling up our backup water systems i've got smaller five gallon containers that i'm rotating i've been cleaning those out getting them ready uh, i've got 55 gallon drums in my garage uh, just recently i built some new shelves where i could store my 55 gallon drums underneath and the drums are empty at the moment. I've got to fill them up. I've been so busy that I've been neglecting that. But this weekend, I'll be going through and getting those ready and filled up. By the way, if you do want to see the video on how to set up a shelf like that in your garage, and you can slide in the drums underneath, I'll post a link up in the cards. I did that years ago. Uh, and when I redid in this uh, new garage that I just moved into, I used the same approach. And it worked out pretty well. I've also been changing out the water in our hot tub. We just emptied that about a couple of weeks ago and filled it up with new water. I do have a forced water filtration system if we were to have to use the water in our hot tub. It's roughly about five or 600 gallons. And as I mentioned a second ago, I've got enough tape to seal off the different door frames, windows, should there be any radioactive fallout. Again, it's so crazy even saying that out loud. I, again, having grown up in the 80s, I thought that was behind us, but here we are in 2022 dealing with this yet again. And I would say if you live in Europe, I would definitely recommend you have a plan in place if fallout becomes an issue. At the time of the recording this video last night, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we saw an attack on the largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine. So again, I'm not gonna even speculate what the heck is going on there, but all that to say, things can change like that. And that's why you need to prepare. I'm also getting a lot of questions about backup power sources. People have been messaging me, which one should they get? I will post a link to my solar generator playlist if you wanna check that out. 
In a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a massive video comparing the different options on the market. I've gotten pretty much all the manufacturers here. I'm going to go put them all through their, you know, put them through the paces, and I'll be doing a video on that. If you are really concerned, you need to get one now, feel free to message me and I can uh, give you some options that I would recommend based on what I'm seeing so far. And the most important thing for me at this time is spending time with my family. We recently went up to the mountains to enjoy the snow and we've been taking some time off to get out and do things as a family. Just two days ago, we were out and I actually met a subscriber. It's the first time it ever happened I was in public. And uh, it's really cool, just getting out and going places, enjoying the time that we have. If things go sideways, at the end of the day, they're all I have and they're the most valuable thing to me. I'm continuing to work on my garden and take care of our chickens. My uh, youngest son, his Boy Scout troop, they've got a lot of activities that I'm excited about, camping, hiking, canoeing, doing these different events. I'm just living life as normal. I'm not retreating, I'm not scared. I've done everything I can. I've prepared as much as I can. And unless something happens, I'm just going to continue on with my life as normal. And that's my advice to you. Stay calm and keep preparing. Now, if you're new to preparedness, I'll be releasing a course that I did. I released it a month ago. We took it off to take some time to get feedback from the community. And we're going to re-release it at the beginning of May. So if you are interested in that, it's a very comprehensive prepping course. I'll post a link below in the description section if you want to sign up for a newsletter when we're going to release that again. And I get it. We're all on edge right now. But my encouragement to you is this. Stay focused and stay calm. We're living in a very unique moment in history. And for me, don't think that because I appear calm on camera that I am not concerned. I am very concerned. I realize that things can change very quickly. We've been witnessing this the last few weeks. Um, I'll say it again, we've got a dictator at the helm of a country that I have nothing against Russians, but we've got someone that is, you know, you, making unilateral decisions without anyone's defiance, it appears. And my fear is that if he continues on this path and decides to take his nation down this road, it will unfortunately impact the rest of us. But there's nothing I can do at this point. It's out of my hands and I'm doing all I can to prepare and to spend time with the most valuable thing to me, which is my family. As always, please stay safe out there.